friends, I hope you're having a great day or night. This is part 7 of a series of classes using Unreal Engine 5 focused in Visual FX. So, we got our scene, everything set up, we can see the background, we can see the foreground CG, and now we want to render. For us to render, we will need, again, the sequencer, um, and that will render the CG for us, right? Uh, you can go and load that in there and you can see what I like doing is when I lock the camera so I don't destroy the camera and the line that I have if I'm using something that does not have animation okay so a no match move camera is I like going to transformation going to frame one and keyframe that and then I go to the end and then I keyframe that as, a, as well so just go and click on that plus over there so this will make so when i go in and lock my camera and move around you know it's going to break as you can see there but then when i move the frames it brings back to normal so this is just a safety measure that we're going to do now i don't want to lock the camera i just want to render from here something very very important okay when we render we don't want to have the composure compositing on we want to actually turn that off and I would even go further because this is kind of like experimental and a new thing. I feel it crashes a lot. So you go and you select all this, okay, as you can see here. And we're going to make a folder for it. And this will be the composure. And I like selecting all of this. Okay, so let's select all of this again. And I'm going to go and do Ctrl X. Okay, but first we're going to save, let's save this. And then we're gonna do Ctrl X. Yeah, I'm gonna do yes. And we have that actually cut, okay. We still have our sequence and have the rest. And then what I do is I do like I bring a notepad and I paste that. So all that data is here. And I can just show you Ctrl A, Ctrl C, and I can paste that again, as you can see, and we are back to normal. So just a quick thing there, right? Uh, so now you have this, you can see this, you can bring that in back later. Why? Why I'm doing that? Because I have seen this crash a lot because of that. It's like the composure is working at the same time the sequencer and one will break the other one so uh, a good way of you doing you could uh, maybe try to copy this information on a script or like a node inside of Unreal but I haven't done that before so let's just keep the way it is okay just use a notepad that would be good now now that I have this and we have the render and we have the sequencer i'll introduce and show you how you can actually use the movie render queue so if you go cinematics you're going to see the movie render queue and this is a very good feature that came i think on 4.25 if i'm not wrong and this will allow us to render our cg that we have here uh, much more easily and with higher quality than the sequencer. The sequencer also uh, allow you to render things, but we're going to use the movie render queue. So the sequence is going to work as a timeline and we're going to drag that sequencer in there. So I'm going to save one more time and then in our class 5, I'm going to get my sequencer and I'll drag this here. You can also click in there and select the one. So this is the airplane. You can see I duplicated, so you can render twice or multiple times. Um, so now that I have that in there, we need to adjust the settings here. So I'm going to go to here, unsave configuration. This window will appear and we will change the, the sequence. I normally go EAXR, that will give you the highest quality, it will give you the alpha, give you all the things you need. So by default, the new preview actually has the ultra, okay? So you can select it in there. If you're using a version that doesn't have 
all these options are in here so you can get EXR you can get a different render you know anti-aliasing game override all of those things in there okay I'll just delete everything I'll show you guys how we do it so I want a EXR and then everything here is good it's a multi-layer that's great I'm also going to be in um, game override this will make sure that we don't have any LODs and everything is the highest quality on the render I'm going to bring as well let me see a different render yeah there we go this is also a very important this will allow us to make the alpha so you can click in there if the alpha does not show in here uh, or it's, it gives you a or just follow the instructions this is saying that when you created your your project uh, this was turned off if you created this for virtual production and movies films right when you create the project this should be fine uh, and it will be just about clicking there if not then you might have some problems and this we have some layers so I want to show you that you can change this to different layers what I like using is the P world that is a very useful one and I just click in there and then we can go P world where is it world position so world position is one that I want to use I'll click there and then we could get ambient occlusion most of the time ambient occlusion doesn't give us that good of a result but we can go and bring that in there as well and now we have ambient occlusion so these are a few passes that Unreal can give you it doesn't give you much you can also search you see how we are in now in the engine content and you can search here for the other passes that you will be able to see on the buff visualization so you see here so for example I could go in content inside of the engine and search for let's say metallic and you can see that we have this metallic and this is on buffer visualization so we can go and click plus here and then let's show this on the folder showing forward review and as you can see now we have a bunch of a bunch of them and this is not like what you would get in Maya or Blender. It's not something that you can separate all the layers and put them together again and make it looks like the beauty. Uh, but you could use this for your benefit if you want uh, to get some extra passes. Okay. So yeah, they are here. We can go and put metallic just to show you. I can click render actually if we go and say accept here okay and I click and I show you can actually see which ones are them and I can see overview and you can see we have some layers so maybe we could get the base color so it's easier for you to see uh, what what that will do so go base color again <laughs> different render and we can go up base color I'm just gonna drag that in and now we have base color we have our work position and we have uh, ambient occlusion so you can see and then we also want to have let me see anti-aliasing this will give you a higher quality image I normally start at 8 in here and I'll say hey override uh, the anti aliasing we can leave it at none and this is good so that's another important settings there and I think everything else here is fine some people use console variables so you could go and search and use some this might give you some extra benefits but I think this is fine um, let's see what else debug no camera burning all of those things are okay there's one thing here that we're missing that I like using a lot and that is the crypto mat okay but crypto mat then you need to have a software that actually can read the crypto mat for you so mm, 
in this case here it might not be what we want so I'm going to actually separate this in layers but I want to show you how you can render the crypto mats as well so if you go edit and plug in and if you bring that in here my screen is a little bit big so some sometimes it gets uh, up there we're gonna go in passes so search for passes and you can see we have a random movie uh, kill additional passes and I can click in there and say okay now it asked me to restart let's restart that really quick I'm gonna save everything save selected okay so I restarted I have everything back to normal so what I want to show you there's a object ID this will give you a crypto map very very important one I find that's very useful uh, the other thing that we want to do is let me see okay so in here we can actually make layers and I'm going to make three layers so I'm going to click on here play and then I'm going to go click play again and we can do two layers we can leave the default one so let's say that the card is going to be the default one we can leave in one layer and then we can have the other one for the plane so I'm gonna go to browse and see the layer so you can see open there and I'm gonna make one for the plane and one for the person so person and what I can do is I'm going to drag that in there and drag that in there so we have plane and person and we also have the other layers so all of this is going to be rendered separate we can need to click on the alpha there uh, because I restart I think I lost some of these options let's see we want multi layers as well alpha passes all good we have full and then anti aliasing it's all great as well everything is good in here we want to change um, the frame range so is a uh, default as well this is because I went and I click on ultra to start to go a little bit faster we want that to be as default so it's going to use the sequencer uh, frame range that we have there and that's 24 frames that's great and we want to change the location where we're going to save so I'm going to do it on real render and let's make one so class uh, render okay. and inside of that we can go and save so that is the location we want to change the, the size as well so this is 3840 right so 3840 3840 by 2160 so 2160 great so we have now the right format we have frame range uh, and we have the location I can click save now I'm gonna click it back there I want to show you that you can save these options so I can go and click save as a preset and I can save anywhere so I would go maybe make a new folder and say uh, sequence or movie preset set and we're gonna go inside there and we can yeah just save I'm gonna call this one uh, my EXR um, settings and now we have that saved there so if I want to use it later I can go and load that from here okay so yeah that's all we need now we made these layers but there's no actor inside of this layer so let's just go and do this really quick I want to have my plane on the plane actor so I select the plane and in layers I go and say add select actor to new to selected layer okay and then I'm gonna do the same with the guy but we're gonna click in here and then I'm gonna say add select actors to select layer not new one okay and then we have that in there so if I turn this one off and on you can see turn off and on and there as well that is awesome and then because in the settings on the layer selection we clicked on add 
default layer, everything else is going to be rendered here. So we have now three different renders. And just so you know, because we click on anti ADC and we say temporal sample count eight, this is going to be re rendered eight times. So if you feel that this is not doing much difference, you can turn this one off, but this is going to re render eight times each frame and each of those frames is going to have three more renders for each layer. Okay, so it can get a little bit long and this is a 4K kind of size, so it's gonna take a few minutes, but it should be good. Uh, I might crash you when I'm rendering, but it should be good. So I'm gonna go click save. I'm going to save everything here just one more time, as you can see, and we should be good to go. So let's render that. As you can see there we are saved, we're rendering it. I'm keeping the card on the ground because that's what's going to give me the shadow. So I will keep that. You can use inside of that card a green screen or a blue screen and then you could render it twice. You can render one without that background, so without the, the plane and another one that has uh, a green screen or blue screen right I'm going to pause the video and then I'll be back once we have all the render okay so I finished rendering it took about 20 minutes okay so some people might be thinking well this is supposed to be real time why it took 20 minutes 20 minutes for 200 frames at 4k with all the paths that we rendered they actually it is so quick you know if you think about Maya or Rudini or Blender with the computer I have here per frame that would take about two hours I think okay maybe one hour if I'm being positive so it takes a lot of time if it's not real time now this again it has so many passes the settings are very high that's why it's taking so long but uh, you know 20 minutes done now that we have that done then we can bring that in a compositing software to get it to the final uh, result thank you for watching if you like this content and want to support cg help just press the cool buttons on the bottom of this video bye now